From retinol to good old vitamin C, we all know that nutrients are good for our skin. But one nutrient often gets overlooked, even though it has the potential to have a pretty dramatic impact on your skin. And what's more, I can almost guarantee that you are not eating enough of this nutrient. By the end of this video, you're going to know what this nutrient is, where you can find it, and how to eat it for maximum skin benefit. So a quick hello if you're new here. My name is Fiona. I'm a registered nutritionist with a master's degree in nutritional medicine. On this channel we talk about nutritional skincare which is a concept that the food that you eat can be an easy and effective part of your skincare routine. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button to make sure you're the first to get all the latest science back tips. So before I tell you what this nutrient is we're going to cover a few of the things that it can do for your skin. So research shows that when you eat this nutrient it can reduce signs of aging, strengthen the skin barrier which means calmer and less reactive skin and it can even help skin conditions like acne and eczema and psoriasis. Can you guess what it is? You may or may not be surprised to learn that we are talking about fibre. Now fibre is a macronutrient which is just as important as things like protein and healthy fat but it's often overlooked. It's also under eaten so most national bodies recommend that we all eat about 30 grams of fibre a day but studies show that people in the US and also people in Europe only manage about half of that. What that means is that you're probably not capitalizing on fiber's radiance boosting effects. And in fact, you could probably eat twice the amount of fiber that you do now. So what is fiber? If you would ask someone 30 years ago what fiber is, they probably would have said wheat bran. And lots of people do think of fiber as this tough, almost scratchy grain-based products. Now those do contain fiber, but there are also lots of far more appealing foods that contain fiber too. Things like fruits and vegetables, pulses and legumes, nuts and seeds, and also whole grains, which incidentally are all the types of foods that we're not eating enough of. Now you've probably heard terms like insoluble fiber and soluble fiber being bandied around, and you might have even heard of the term prebiotic fiber. What you need to know is that we can't digest any of these types of fiber, but that doesn't mean they're not useful for us, far from it. In very broad terms, insoluble fiber is what sweeps through our gut and keeps everything moving. Soluble fiber is what feeds our friendly bacteria in our gut, and prebiotic fiber is especially good at feeding friendly bacteria in our gut. So what this means is that fiber can act like skincare from the inside out. So how can you eat more fiber for skin benefit? The way I see it, you have two levels to this. Level one is to focus on eating more fruits and vegetables, pulses and legumes, nuts and seeds, and whole grains, AKA the foods that most of us don't eat enough of. So let's look at an example day of eating and see how we can increase our fiber content by adding in these foods. So on this day, I'm going to have oatmeal or porridge for breakfast, a tuna sandwich for lunch, and spaghetti bolognese for dinner. Let's add the fiber. For breakfast, I'm going to add two tablespoons of ground up flaxseed to my oatmeal, and I'm also going to add a chopped peach to it. That adds 10 grams of fiber. Now for lunch, I'm gonna swap the bread out for some wholemeal sourdough, and I'm also going to serve my sandwich with some sliced up bell pepper. That adds 12 grams of fiber. And for dinner, I'm going to swap the pasta for a whole grain version. I'm going to stir some lentils into my bolognese just to bulk it out a bit, and I'm going to serve my meal with some broccoli. That adds over 20 grams of fiber. And then for dessert, I'm going to have a large bowl of fresh raspberries. That's another eight grams of fiber. So including the fiber we already had in the food and the fiber I've added, I've boosted my fiber intake from a pretty average amount to a whopping 55 grams. That is almost double your target fiber intake. And incidentally, it's also an amount that's comparable to some hunter-gatherer diets. Now, a word of warning, if you're not used to eating this much fiber, you're going to have to move up slowly because if you add too much fiber too quickly, you can experience things like gas and bloating and other uncomfortable digestive symptoms. But moving up slowly is easy. Just look at this menu, take inspiration from one part and see if you can include it today. So that's level one that's eating more fruits and vegetables, pulses and legumes, nuts and seeds and whole grains. Level two is to eat more prebiotic foods specifically. Now remember, prebiotic fiber is the fiber that's really good at feeding your gut bacteria, which has a positive knock-on effect on your skin. Some of the best prebiotic foods include onions, garlic, leeks, 
asparagus, oats, flaxseed, apples, and green bananas. What I love about these foods is that it doesn't need to be difficult to get them into your day. So as mentioned, you could stir a couple of tablespoons of ground flaxseed into your morning porridge or oatmeal. You could go for a greener banana instead of a yellower banana to boost your prebiotic fiber intake. You could choose to snack on an apple to support your friendly gut bacteria. If you can reliably get one or two prebiotic foods into your day every day, you're doing really well. It can be easy and enjoyable. Now, prebiotics can also be taken as supplements. Things like galactooligosaccharides, or GOS for short, psyllium husk, acacia gum, inulin, and partially hydrolyzed guar gum, or PHGG for short. Now, I don't think these are necessary because you can easily hit your fiber target or your fiber goals through food. However, because most of these supplements are soluble powders that you can just stir into your drink of choice, you can't deny that they are a easy and convenient way of boosting your fiber intake. You need to start slowly with these to avoid digestive effects. And generally speaking, GOS, acacia gum, and PHEG tend to be better tolerated by most people. And I particularly like GOS just because it has more skin-specific research behind it. So to sum up, fiber is an underappreciated nutrient for your skin. And most of us are eating half as much as we should. Fiber promotes healthy skin, including reducing signs of aging. Most of us can up our fiber intake by eating more fruits and vegetables, pulses and legumes, nuts and seeds, and whole grains. And prebiotic foods like onion and garlic and green bananas can be really helpful too. And the best part is that increasing your fiber intake is both easy and enjoyable. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, you might like another video I've done on flaxseed specifically, which I will link here for you. And I hope to see you there. Otherwise, I will see you next time for another video on nutritional skincare.